poor with it, and we find that you what we need. I'm, I'm sure you know the problem we discussed beforehand. All those problems are part of the lack of research, actually. And you know, researchers can find out actual facts and inform people. Then probably um, easily we can sort that out. Anyway, let me go through my slides because I want to finish my talk in exactly 20 minutes because. I had a hard time to reduce it to 20 minutes. I originally planned this for 45 minutes. Oh my goodness. Then I had to reduce somehow because usually plenary sessions are 45 to 1 hour. When it comes to uh, you know reducing 20 minutes, I tried to cut down so many things. But I, I try to you know pass my message to you uh, even with the 20 minutes time. This is my presentation outline. I like to begin with, uh, with why research is important uh, to a CPU nations, and uh, then I'm going to talk about the research impacts um, for professional education in the domains of management, um, and also uh, and management and social sciences. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about the methods to improve research effectiveness because no point of doing research if, it is, if they are not effective. So you need to achieve the effectiveness of uh, research. Then really important thing is ethics, research ethics actually, which is really important in professional education. I'm trying to uh, touch on a little bit on that. And then again, I want to show you what amount of funding goes to research in Sri Lanka and then the rest of the world and, and uh, try to show you some sources of funding available uh, elsewhere to do some research in Sri Lanka. With the final remarks, I'm going to finish my presentation. Uh, the research for situations uh, usually research is adding something into the knowledge available actually. Very simply, if we say what is research is to generate new ideas, it could be measurable and uh, testable. That is not only research. You know, you can do something without uh, measurable and testable, but you know, we need to gradually uh, add the, accumulate the human uh, knowledge. That is the basic idea of research. That is what we are trying to do. Why this, this is important to do, build a secure nation? Because any nation, not Sri Lanka, any nation, when you look at, they need the security on human, then the security on homeland, political, economic, and this uh, cyber came very recently. We need to understand the uh, security on all those aspects. Not only that, we need to have the security on energy, natural resources, environment, because if we don't don't have the security on those areas, we cannot achieve uh, any development or we cannot have situation. And when you look at the uh, research in MSSA, and of course, um, if you want to combine all those together, we are going to the idea of the sustainable development. This is kind of buzzword all over the world now, but it is true because you need to have a sustainable development without that uh, you cannot uh, achieve your target. Uh, this is what the sustainable development for situa nations. Um, in that we are trying to pose for the exploring base of meeting societal needs actually uh, that are environmentally more sustainable because whatever the development you need to take care of the um, environment. And this concern with the links between society and nature, as you know, society cannot feed if we don't take the something from the tribalism. Actually, we have this kind of tribalism and many, many uh, subjects, they think my subject is the best subject. Without that, no one can survive. You know, that kind of attitude we have, I know, also, uh, I know even my close friends have this kind of attitude, I always argue with that. But you know, that is, in the modern world, when you consider the globalization, when you think about the sustainable development, you cannot achieve, if we have
have that uh, disciplinary tribalism. That is why we need to move away from that. There are three widely uh, used approaches in the world at the moment. One is, one is multidisciplinary, in that <coughs> we are trying to see the multiple, discipl multiple disciplines, they come together and uh, each working primarily with their uh, own framing of and methods, but they have interaction with that other subject, which is called the science of in interaction. <coughs> The second method is interdisciplinary, which is occupying the space between discipline. You move on to the other disciplines and get back. And uh, through that experience, they are trying to build new knowledge. That is what's really important. And most of the West, especially European Union, uh, give in funding only if the approach is interdisciplinary, otherwise they, do, they won't give you fund to do the research. That is called science of integration. Third one is going beyond that, creating crossroads in which different disciplines interact uh, and problematize each other through a social learning process, science of hybridization, which is, which is much better, but not many countries, not many nations go into that yet. But uh, I can see multidisciplinary approach and interdisciplinary is working in many other countries. Uh, uh, but. Uh, that is the kind of thing uh, European uh, research agencies, UK, uh, America, even Japan, Ch even China now start that. That is the way we can achieve um, you know, better results if you, if you, if you do the, uh, your research based on um, at least uh, multidisciplinary or it is better if it is interdisciplinary. Moving on that, um, Um, I'm going to talk about the research impact. I'm not going to talk about uh, interdisciplinary research, but you know, anybody wants to know more about, you know, I'm going to give my contacts. You can, you can contact me, and then uh, that is how we need to develop our research. Um, research impacts for professional integration. That is the theme of this conference. So I need to talk about a little bit about that, otherwise. I'm not, you know, touching upon the subjects that uh, the conference uses as their themes. Research impact, you can, uh, you need to have the research impact if you want to have the professional integration. And uh, there are two kinds of research impact uh, we identify. One is uh, academic impact, which is the impact of individual researchers, but they are working on interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary, but that impact, uh, how that uh, research are influenced upon so the academy and the universities, mainly, mainly academic or, uh, universities. And uh, this kind of thing, anywhere in the world, they use the um, measuring that, using the citation, what you publish, you get the, uh, uh, the peer review, and then you get the, uh, when you publish, you know, three star, four star, five star, you get kind of ranking, and through that, uh, you get some kind of ranking to your research. Uh, if you take, for example, the uh, UK, where I used to work, uh, I'm still working, the research assessment exercise, RAE, we had 2000 to 2008, and now we have the research excellence network, REM. Um, in both, actually, you need to have at least every four years, uh, three star or more journal articles published each year. And if you don't do that, you cannot get your promotions. It is, it is a compulsory for the staff to survive. Otherwise, they won't get any promotion. They stagnate in, in, in just one level. That is, that is how any country, they won't improve the research. You need to put that kind of barrier. Without that, I don't think any country can increase the research on those. And the second category is external impact, which is really important in uh, sustainable development because that is how the research finding goes to the other aspect, not the academic, but uh, society and the, and the business, government work. They use that research information in making policy decisions and that policy 
always followed by that university research. And actually, external impact, I know, uh, I work quite a lot on the uh, fisheries sector in European Union with the EU funding, and uh, I know most of the fisheries laws, policies, they pass based on those research. They actually give the links to those researchers, and then any, any policy makers have any doubt about that, or if they don't understand, they can uh, directly contact us and get you know, more clarification. That is how that research goes into the general society. That is how we can achieve the sustainable development, because otherwise people don't know, those who take the policy decision, those who run the government, run, run the countries, they don't, they just do, uh, if you take like Sri Lanka, you know, most of the politicians are not even pass A level or O level. I mean, they don't have knowledge. I'm not criticizing them, but they need to go to the academy, um, look at their research, and they should learn, actually. Um, that, that is how we can address most of the problem. Without that, you can do that. Um, if you look at this academic impact, again, they look at the journal articles mainly on the academic impact, and that is how they categorize. And books accounts for 8 to 30 percent, but always you have journal articles because that has really nice system to rank uh, using the um, peer review things and giving the stars. You know, they, they rank the um, journal um, article publication, those number of stars they get in. Um, but the books uh, accounts for 8 to 30 percent because they are not peer reviewed. Because if I write a book, no one um, check that and say whether this is right or not. But journal articles always go through other you know, the academics and they, they pass their information and they rank accordingly. Then uh, another, another point is if academics uh, wants to improve their citation, a uh, very, very simple idea, you know, you need to have title names and informative memorable because, you know, this uh, citations always, I'm, I'm sure you know what is citation. Citation is someone uh, identify your work and follow that, and you know, that can be the citation. That citation is really important. So, when you write something, you need to have easy uh, your names, title names, and information uh, more memorable, then you get the more citation through that. Um, then I won't quickly go through because my talk on the research and uh, how we have the functionalities in the research process. I'm sure you know that, but you know I just want to uh, show that this uh, when you do a research, this is this is the this is how you need to follow your research. You need to have the first explore what you are going to do actually. You can explore through the literature. You are sure those who are doing masters, PhD research, they follow this uh, method and uh, based on that you can uh, modify your research question and, and you can look at the theory, you can answer that uh, research question. Then you move on down uh, and uh, decide in your research. Um, you can use the available research methods. They are, they are internet you can find or lots of uh, books and then you can uh, think about if you have to collect data or some information, you can think about what, what kind of sampling strategy and then uh, you create your research proposal uh, and the execution stage, you have to do the pilot testing and then the data collection, data analysis and writing report. This, this simple process, but when you're doing uh, you spend quite a lot of time doing that if you want to do right. I'm sure when you do the research method class in your master's or PhD program, this is what the entire syllabus is based on actually. And uh, each section you spend like um, three, four days lectures and try to understand and then you get the, you follow the functional, uh, functionalistic uh, research process. Uh, in MSS, it also we have to do that. When you are doing that uh, method, you need to do, if you want to do it in scientific way, there are two methods uh, um, widely used in uh, everywhere actually, America, EU, UK, 
uh, even now um, World Bank and all other people also, other donor agencies also looking. And they are looking at the two things of, uh, uh, two approach. One is theory of change, the other one is the logical framework. Both has similar approach and uh, both are going to the same thing. But the way you do that is different. Uh, this is kind of a little bit messy, but the other one straightforward. And I'm going to uh, go through the theory of change, what is theory of change, and then I'm going to go back to the graph and explain that a little bit in detail. Theory of change tells you what kind of research, how you do your research to make some changes. I, I mentioned at the beginning, adding some knowledge into the existing uh, knowledge is, is a research. So how you need to do that, you need to find the, how, how the change uh, takes place. This gives kind of big picture including issues related to the context that you can't control. You know, sometimes you want to do certain things but you can't control. But if you have this kind of big picture uh, theory of change, you can control that. And it shows different pathways because when you go along that, you have a kind of straight path. You go on circles, you go on uh, moving like um, um, haphazard way, like going here and there. Whichever the path you chosen, you can uh, show that in your, th in your theory of change. Um, and it describes how and why uh, you think the change happens, because you need to understand how and why uh, it takes place. It is basically answering the quote, the complete in the sentence, if we do X, then Y will um, change the course. So that will tell you why. Uh, this is as I mentioned, it's presented as a diagram form um, with some narrative text. And this diagram or theory of change is more flexible, doesn't have a particular format. You can decide the way that your problem is, problem is and you can select cyclical process, feedback loss, box, and multiple other boxes. And also you describe why you think one box lead to the other uh, in this theory of change. It's mainly used as a tool for the research program design and evaluation. And the logical framework, as you shown in the picture, it is, it is kind of description of the program, the pro description of your research. Mm, it's, it's used the, uh, it could use to complete the sentence, if we plan to do X, which will give you uh, why, why results, you know, that, that is what it explained and it is used kind of a matrix which is, which is called log frame, that is how the name came, logical uh, framework and this is linear and uh, you can't go back and uh, check that and no cyclical process of feedback flows and you can, this is really important to the theory of change because you can include risk and assumption because you will have risk and assumption when you do research, so you can improve that. This is also uh, mainly used to do as a tool for the monitoring research programs. Um, in brief, very briefly, uh, research ethics, because uh, this is one of the things, if you won't have the professional integration, if you take the research ethics, you cannot have uh, um, that professional integration and most of the developing countries and developed emerging economies um, when EU is giving uh, um, research grant they need to have this the first thing that is what they are looking for um, and uh, this address some of the needs of the country what kind of ethical process you need to do this is uh, be scientifically sound um, but uh, this this uh, kind of law in some of the EU um, national le legislation, you cannot have research if you don't um, have. And, and if in, the, in the case of UK research, even for the PhD or master's graduate student, this is kind of mandatory. You need to have the um, research uh, ethics uh, process before you start any research. Um, okay, the um, funding, we need to have funding to do the research. And I know the Sri Lankan uh, research allocation, 
uh, was for the 19, uh, uh, 2008, it was like point C 0 0.11 percent, but the same time in 0 0.11 percent of the GDP, right? Um, the same time when you, when you look at the um, USA, it's like 2.61 percent of their GDP, imagine that huge economy they are putting 2.8, 2.68 and UK was 2.8 and the EU was uh, 3.0 percent with that huge in, of, the, of the GDP of entire Europe. So that is how reset can be improved, you need to have money. This is where if you want to do your individual uh, research, your department research, there are so many um, uh, available. These all these are giving funding for the third country, like um, a developing country research. So look at, go to the internet and look for um, this. Just put this name, and then they will uh, tell you when the research funding available, and uh, and then uh, you can keep track on. And uh, if anybody wants to get in touch with this organization or get any help from them or if you want to have a joint research, um, we, can, we can touch upon any of these uh, and I'm sure all of you can get the, this page yeah, of the, you know, and then, then keep that and try to uh, get into the internet and try to find out they, they give, anyway they give funding actually, but only thing you need to have a UK or uh, if it is EU research, uh, UK or America, you have to have some organization there, but I can help you find organization in UK or EU if you want to do research. Um, so that is that is how we can improve the effective of research in uh, Sri Lanka. You need to get funding. Don't wait for the government to give because uh, you know what what the country is the situation. I don't think they can even now give zero point one one percent of GDP because. The situation can't be to sort out the feeding people before that. So don't wait till that improves. Go and find in the uh, research fund in other countries. That is the best way. Okay. My final remarks are: um, these are the kind of research research we do. Theory building. Uh, this this get from the generalized. Uh, knowledge from the observation and then you can do the deductive research. Um, depending on the type of research, these are the things you are going to do. This is my contacts if you want to um, contact and get some information about this research grant or any other thing I presented in this uh, presentation. And thanks for your patience. And if you have a question, we can, we can answer them now.